Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's see if we can come up with an equation that shows us how to divide two complex numbers when they're in polar form. Again, we have the same two complex numbers in general form. Now we're going to divide them. Let's see what that looks like. Now again, when we divide complex numbers, we're going to need to multiply the numerator and the denominator of that fraction by the conjugate of the denominator, which means that we're going to multiply this times in the numerator, we're going to get the cosine of theta 2 minus i times the sine of theta 2. And of course, the very same thing in the denominator. You can see, of course, that the modulus of the first one is divided by the modulus of the second one. Just like when we multiply, we multiply the moduli. Here, we divide one by the other. But what does the rest of it look like? All right, let's see what that turns out to be. In the numerator, we're going to get r1 times the cosine of this times the cosine of that. So we get the cosine of theta1 times the cosine of theta2. This times that gives us minus i times the cosine of theta1 times the sine of theta2. And then this times this gives us plus i times the sine of theta 1 times the cosine of theta 2 and then this times this gives us minus i squared times the sine of theta 1 times the sine of theta 2. All right, that's quite a numerator. Now we divide that by the denominator. We have an r2 times but now realizing here, that's why we took the conjugate, that the middle term is going to disappear because we have a plus i sine theta 2 and a minus i sine theta 2, which means in the denominator, we end up with the cosine of theta 2 times the cosine of theta 2 squared, so that's the cosine squared of that, minus i squared times the sine of the same angle squared. And of course, i squared is negative 1, which makes this positive, which makes the whole denominator become 1. So that means that is equal to the ratio of r1 divided by r2 times what we have left in the numerator. Now, let's see, we're going to combine this and this goes as the real part that becomes negative 1 times negative 1. So we have the cosine of theta 1 times the cosine of theta 2 plus the sine of theta 1 times the sine of theta 2. And that looks familiar. That looks like the cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2. And then here we'll factor out a plus i, or maybe we should factor out a minus i. I think minus i would be better. Minus i, and that becomes the cosine of theta 1 times the sine of theta 2, and this becomes then a minus sine of theta 1 times a cosine of theta 2. And that is also looking familiar because this looks like, let's see here, that's the sine of that minus that. That would be equal to the sine of theta 1 minus theta 2. Yes, it does. All right, so now we can finish. So this is equal to r1 divided by r2 times the cosine of theta 1 minus theta 2, and that would be minus i times the sine of theta 1, and I don't, I need this parenthesis here, the sine of theta 1 minus theta 2. And actually, let's see here. If we multiply this negative in with this negative, then the switches around, we get the sine of theta 1 cosine theta 2 minus cosine theta 1 sine of theta 2, which is equal to the positive of that. So we actually need a positive. This times this, we'll switch that around, this becomes negative, and then we get that result. And this is the quotient of two complex numbers in polar form. So here we divide the one modulus by the other, and notice that we have to subtract the argument of the second from the first. And that's how it's done.